Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Intimate Legato Cello by Sonic Cinema. Following from their contemporary soloist series, Sonic Cinema have now presented a competitively priced solo cello with a special focus on various legato speeds, along with unique solo cello sustains. Intimate Legato Cello is compatible with the free Contact Player or the full version of Contact 6.7.1 or above. It downloads as 5.67 GB and includes 11 Legato snapshots and 7 Cello Sustain snapshots. Intimate Legato Cello is available from Sonic Cinema for £69, but is currently available for the introductory price of £48 from November 9th through the 23rd, 2022. So today we're checking out Intimate Legato Cello by Sonic Cinema. You might already be familiar with Sonic Cinema's solo uh, stringed instruments such as the contemporary soloist bass, viola, cello, and violin. We've reviewed those on the channel and they really have a unique take on each of those solo instruments. But with Intimate Legato Cello, the focus is obviously all in the name. It's all about the legato. And as you'll see here, there's numerous kinds of legato. There's actually 10 different um, snapshots for 10 different kinds of legato from something you know, really slow to something fast to ambient and huge to aggressive and to something far away and distant. And then there's also, I think, seven, yeah, seven different sustained articulations that you can use as well, along with a small sound design engine that you can tailor, you know, some of the sounds to yourself, including a plethora of different kinds of reverbs that you can try out. But let's go ahead and dive right in. First of all, I'm just going to introduce you to the keys because one thing you'll want to know is you can see the blue keys are obviously the playing range, but the red key below is for a rebo, which to me is just a really, really nice addition that I wish I wish every stringed instrument <laughs> came with this, a reboing uh, key, because it just makes all the difference in realism, as you'll be able to tell as I play. So let's go ahead and start with the legato close slow snapshot. <laughs> I mean, that's just really lovely. That reboing key just makes such a difference. I love the the slowness. I mean, just the, the you know, you can really hear. I mean, this is not a cello meant to be played fast. This is really for those just really beautiful, slow, melodic lines. I apologize, I'm not doing a whole lot with the expression control here simply because I'm so focused on that reboing key. But obviously, um, let me do it without reboing and let you hear some of the expression because obviously it's there. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the close fast. So the close mic in a fast uh, articulation or fast playing style. Really nice. 
nice. And let's do a mid slow. So obviously we'll play that slow, but maybe not quite as slow as we did the really adagio uh, cello that we were playing just a little while ago. And let's do the mid fast. So uh, I was saying the mid slow mid. Uh, I apologize. The mid is actually the mic, the mic position. It's not how fast because I was noticing that slow was just as slow as the as the close slow. Well, duh, it's because the mic is mid. So let's try this, the fast one. And now let's go to the far slow, so the far mic. Really lovely. Gosh, really lovely. All right, let's go to Legato Far Fast. And let's try the ambient slow. So we have a more distant mic, an ambient mic, I guess. Let's try that. Love that low note. Listen to that. Wow, I really love that low C. 
That's nice. Okay, let's go to the ambient fast. And you can see there's a speed control here for the legato as well as the intensity. So you can see the speed is turned all the way up. Right, and let's go to the legato in a huge space. Wow, that got a lot louder too, huh? That was really nice. And aggressive. In this one, we can see that it's still slow on the speed, but the intensity is really high. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, and let's try some of the sustains. So here's the sustains close. I don't know where I went with that. <laughs> Now you'll notice I'm not going to play the bow key this time. The the you know I'm going to actually just hold it, and you'll notice that there is a bow change if you sustain it long enough. So let's just sustain it for a moment and see how long that lasts. So you can hear that bow change, and it will just continue to do that. which obviously makes sense because that's what you would have to do. But I do like the fact that you can actually, you know, insert bow changes there as you'd like as well. So I 
like that. Yeah, it's nice. And the sustains mid. And the sustains far. and sustains ambient. and the sustains in a huge space. Lovely. And sustains aggressive. and sustains far away. Really, really lovely. And that, my friends, is all, uh, that's all the snapshots. Now, let's just go back for a moment to the close mic slow, which is. And just to give you an idea of some of the things you can do with the sound design engine, you have these two different controls. You have your global page and you have your mic mix page. So you can see that the sound design engine is actually split in half. There's two tabs over here to control this half and two tabs over here to control this half. So again, you've got your global mix, which has to do with the intensity and speed of your legato, as well as your mic positions, the proximity you are to the mic, how much you want it to be detuned, and of course your expression. 
And then your mic mix here is actually where instead of just using the proximity control, you can actually control those mics in real time. So you could, you know, bring in more of the mid mic. Take out the stereo in the far, just focus on close. Or just focus on far. Or just the mid. or the stereo. So yeah, you can see, you can do a lot with your mic there, but now let's go over here and your envelope section is kind of interesting. You have four, or excuse me, three ADSR controls. You've got attack, decay, sustain and release for your amp, your filter and your pitch. So just to give you an idea with the pitch, this gets really interesting. So let's turn the attack up on this and your pitch will actually, the attack envelope, if you extend that out, your pitch will actually go with it. Check this out. Interesting. Let's try the decay. I'm curious to see what that does. Exact opposite. And of course you got your sustain and release. So just really interesting controls there. And then your effects, you have a low pass filter. With a low pass, a band pass and a high pass. And we're going to turn on, oops, what am I doing wrong? There, there we go. Ah, I'll get it right in a moment. There we go. Band pass. And your resonance control. And you've got some tape saturation, which sounds really nice. Here's three different kinds. This kind. And you have a grade control, which I think is kind of like a lo fi. Nope, it's not a lo-fi, it's distortion. And you've got your delay, your chorus, now your reverb. I want to point this out especially because you just have a ton of different impulse responses. You can't see them all here because they're falling off the screen. But starting with this B Canyon, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six above that. And then below, I mean, it just keeps going. And you still have three even below the line that I can't scroll through. So let's actually just pick a few of these just for fun. I'm going to reload the patch just to make sure we clear everything out. So let's go back to the reverb right now. I'm on stage front. Let's try burning sand. Wow, it's got an interesting resonance to it. How about cleaners? a doom room. Wow, really cool. Maybe, um, Mistake. <laughs> That's an interesting name. Really, really 
cool. You can see you can just do a whole lot of different things with this engine. Let's actually leave that mistake on. We've got our time synced, our delay time sync here, and you can see it's um, changing the note values here. So let's go with an eighth delay. We've got a pretty good amount there. A lot of feedback. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's turn the amount up and turn the time up and turn the feedback up. Actually, you know what? Let's turn that time. Let's turn it to half notes. There's just a lot to like with this one. Not only in my mind does it sound really good, I mean, the legato is really believable. This bow change key switch makes all the difference in the world. It really is where the magic happens because it just adds that sense of realism and humanness. It just feels like it's being bowed. I love that. Again, I think every string library, especially every solo string library, most of all, should include that. But not only that, you know, you have all of these different snapshots for legato. You have sustains, which definitely extends the usefulness of the library. But this one is just really competitively priced. In the world of solo cellos, it is rare to be able to find one of this kind of quality for 69 pounds, which is what this one retails for. Um, it's actually on introductory offer until from November 9th through the 23rd of 2022. Don't know when you're watching this video, but... If you're watching it during that time, it's actually on introductory offer for 48 pounds. But again, even at 69 pounds, this is really, really a, a great library. Thanks for checking out Intimate Legato Cello with me today. So what are your thoughts about this one? Do you like the different Legato snapshots and the sustains? Which one was your favorite? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. Make sure to like the video and share it with your friends and please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews and stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.